He's a great big soft ear to take. Hi, buddy. Welcome along to the vlog, folks. This morning, uh, because we've got a bit of downtime with the Bruce side, uh, I do have. I'll start again. I do have a lot of technical stuff to do, welding and things like that in the brewery, but I also need to make a real catch up on um, the admin side. So we've got accounting to do, we've got HR to do, we've got employment contracts to do, all these kind of things. Can't really film it, you know, because I'm just sat there on the computer concentrating, it's difficult. One thing I did do this morning though, is create a label for the jerky. Uh, I'm also going to have to create bottle labels because you're actually sat on a thousand uh, brown bottles, beer bottles, because we're going to start bottling the Vacant Gesture and some other beers as well. That needs labels. So to get me up and running again on the label software, I use the GIMP. <laughs> Cracking name, eh? But uh, yeah, to get me up and running again on it, I've designed this morning a label for our beef jerky, which I've been obviously practicing making over the past few weeks. So we're going to sell this in 40 gram bags in the pub. And uh, I think you might say that that is quite the label. I'm, I'm dead pleased with it actually, how it's come out. So this is a sweet and smoky one. If anybody wants to make this beef jerky at home, um, the most important thing that goes into this is the Viva Cuba sweet and smoky sauce, which has just become available in Morrison's. It's a it's an artisan uh, product made by a company in Leeds. Some people might be familiar with it. I'd never seen it before, and Abigail actually picked it up off the shelf because it's got fantastic labelling in there. And we uh, did one of our batches of jerky with it, and it's spot on. It really is gorgeous. It's not spicy. It's just sweet and smoky, and they do a basil one as well, but uh, or herb, garlic and herb one. Um, but yeah, try it. And of course, plenty of soy sauce, plenty of Henderson's relish, bit of salt, bit of paprika. That's all that we put into this. Um, oh, and a spot of mustard. But yeah, really impressed with that uh, that label. I think it looks shite hot like. So for the rest of the day, I'm going to be spending a little bit more time. Uh, maybe up on the computer, but we do have some other things to put into the kitchen. So I need to measure up for an extractor fan in the kitchen, and there was something else. Oh, the uh, the filter baffles, the grease baffles that go into the uh, into the cooker hood. We've also got second hand a Samsung um, CM1919 microwave which strangely doesn't have a turntable. They just don't have turntables, but these are like 15, 900 quid, 1500 quid brand new or something like that. Or oh, some more of the labels look you can see on the top. Uh, so Stuart picked it up with a seller on Facebook or something and it works a treat. He also got this one for free, but this one doesn't have all the insides. Look, it should have a turntable in there but it hasn't got one, so I don't know, I'm unsure. And I think the chap said it was tripping the electrics, so I know microwaves can be very dangerous because they have massive voltages in the transformers. So I'm not gonna play with that. Uh, to seal the jerky that we've got at home, I brought out my old Andrew James vac sealer, which uh, died of death last year. So I'm going to put a new strip in there, which I got off eBay for a few quid. Uh, we do have the big vac sealer that I use for the hops, and uh, I bought that 400ml heat sealer, which doesn't vacuum, it's just a heat sealer. That will do the job for work, and this one can go in the kitchen next door, so we can seal, seal up the jerky bags. Uh, and then this afternoon, we may have to run out Stuart might have got us some office equipment for up there, so we can finally um, make it look like an office, because frankly it doesn't. Right, I'm going to put the camera down now and get some work done. I'll see you just like this. You can stay there, Chance. Right, we're going to cruise across to the other side of town to get some freebies. Oh, yes. So there's loads of office equipment. 
going free. Well, that's what strikes me as strange. Well, we'll give it a once over when we get there, but I'm not going to say no to a bit of a freebie. Oh, what's he doing? He's perving. He's freaking perving. It doesn't stop. So, quite uh, crazily, the chap we've just picked up all this office equipment from uh, sells mechanical pump seals for like the sugar industry. Uh, he's worked on brewery pumps before and he's on the bloody doorstep. It's a small world, isn't it? So yeah, was it Lavi International? Latte. Latte International. So if you're watching this and uh, you need pump seals for your brewery, mechanical seals, silicon carbide, Viton or Viton, that man does them all and he sounded pretty cheap as well. He just reeled off a few prices for some pumps and uh, they weren't expensive at all. In fact, they were cheaper than eBay, a lot of them. So yeah, it's worth a, worth a punt for your pump. Why don't you? I got him on camera and all. What a knob jocko. Oh, feeling a little bit uh, exhausted. So we went out and picked up the furniture, obviously, you've just seen. Uh, we brought it back, so now we're swapping out a load of stuff. Uh, we brought down these big old chairs that uh, Sean and Paul, um, that Pycroft brought us these for. Uh, temporaries like and they've served as well up here in the office but they're big bulky and very difficult to move around so we've got rid of them and then coming up here in the bright light we now have something that looks a little bit more like an office so yeah well, these are what we picked up uh, metal cabinet storage unit one metal cabinet storage unit two Loads of storage. Metal cabinet storage unit three. Needs some shelf brackets. We got a desk, which unfortunately doesn't fit at the top of the stairs in the pub where we wanted it, but I'll just make something for that. Metal cabinet storage unit four. Check that bad boy out. That's nicely out of the way. Then we also got this little, uh, file set, you know, with all the... Oh, that's terrible squeak, isn't it? Need some WD on these bad boys. And then well, there was a big sofa kind of thing up here. The kind of thing you'd have in your conservatory. So, uh, well, there were two actually. So we brought one of them in here. That's now living upside down in the junk shop. This is like the junk shop where we have all sorts of junk. Like old, well, there for the next pub when we get another one, folks. Auto tilts, bottle filler, stillage in the corner. This is where we've put all of the pipe work out of those remote coolers that we've got. Then just stuff we've been saving. You might remember this when we made the bar top. That was the, the router jig to try and level it out. Loads of chairs over here that we need to repair. My bike doesn't get used, a lathe needs repairing, two fridges in the back there, there's another one as freezer there, yeah another fining cabinet, so we've got loads of stuff up here and we're throwing one of the uh, sofa things away but I've just spent the day humping stuff around like some type of removal man so still as well and uh, yeah we're knackered now I've just realised we forgot to put these chairs on the freaking van so we'll best pull the shutters up and uh, throw them on oh, I'm ready for off wow just had the fright of my life so I just came into the unit and I noticed that the STC's on the cold room were all off look 
and I thought, oh shit, what's gone on? All the rest of the lighting was on, so it must have been the cooling circuit in the C panel that's tripped. So uh, that runs all the STCs and all the sockets on the ring main that I told you about the other day. So I come across to the cooler, the classic 1000 that we've got, operating as a workhorse, and it's off. So I troubleshoot, turn everything on, uh, off, turn the electrics back on up there, and then I start putting things on one at a time. Lo and behold, we put the classic 1000 back on. Once the STC kicks in, on there, that's, you see all the wiring on the back of it, but yeah, once the STC kicked on, boom, went again. Tripped absolutely everything. And of course, you know we bought this old piece of kit, second hand, possibly even third or fourth hand, and chances are it ain't got many days left. It's not long of this life. It was manufactured in October 1995. It says so there, look on the little VIN plate, if whatever you want to call it. A little ID plate, so 10th 95. It's an old unit, it's got some miles under its belt, right? So I thought, alright then, we're 75 quid down, we've lost it, we're gonna have to go and buy a brand new unit. But first, I'll diagnose the problem. So, come underneath, the compressor's warm. That's fine, compressors are normally warm. Uh, so we unplug the compressor, turn it back on again still trips. Excellent news, it's not the compressor. We come back underneath, I have a look at the little diagram, you know the little wiring diagram that they provide you with, and I realise that we don't have any of these circuits in line anymore. Uh, they're the compressor, so that's good. We don't have the uh, top pump on anymore because that's now being controlled by uh, a separate 240 plug there, that's being controlled directly on its own fuse, it's on a different circuit. So all we had left was the internal 24 volt transformer to power the fan outside and the internal pump which pumps the liquid, the glycol around. So we came down, we disconnected the really 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 old, I mean look at that that is a transformer so you don't see them much anymore so we disconnected the transformer left the glycol pump connected turned it back on and plugged the compressor back in lo and behold everything fired up so it's this old rickety transformer now that uh, is dead as a doornail so we're gonna have to figure out how much power that fan outside wants to run and we'll install a new 24 volt transformer in here and uh, get hopefully get the whole thing back up and running but yeah it's definitely uh, a fright that I didn't want because that for a new base unit a brand new one they're 600 pound that would have done us this month no money left for Abigail's dance classes Hey, that's what would have happened, but thankfully all is good in the hood. We just need a new transformer, so I'll get one of those ordered tonight. Hopefully should be with us by the weekend. And uh, we should have this back up and running for any hot weather that we've got. I mean, chances are, sorry, I'm just turning all the lights off. If anything like this is going to pack up on you, it's going to pack up on you and the hottest part of the year, because that's when it's working like a dog. I'm glad it's gone now and not later on. And I'm glad I managed to figure out what it was. So I'm just gonna go and get Stuart and uh, he's gonna drop me off at home hopefully. And then I'll edit the vlog, go for a little bit of a jog and then uh, get geared up for tomorrow because I'm walking around like a madman, aren't I? Yeah, and then we'll get geared up for tomorrow because tomorrow we are Going to start the foundations on the wall next door. Lovely weather for it, so why not? So I'm anticipating my aggregates to be dropped. I think I'll have them drop down here, something like that, and then we'll just 
wheelbarrow them through as needed. So if you want to watch me sweating my arse off in the shiny, shiny sunshine tomorrow, then you know where to come for a little bit of that. We'll see you tomorrow.